The reason why we chose to have all the money from the auction, the fundraiser, go to American Parkinson's Disease Association is because Chuck Bunnard's supported so many people and he suffers from Parkinson's and uh, he's made it a lot longer than anybody ever thought he would. Uh, and he's had his ups and downs with it, but he's fought it the whole time. And we're so proud of him. We wanted to honor him. It's hard to give a man that has built everything himself, it's hard to give him anything, but we can give him some respect and some honor. And I think this is the best way for us to do that. There's a group of people here that, that you've touched very deeply and we all wanted to get together and do something for you that shows our appreciation for what you've done for everybody over the years. So, you know, we did the whiskey thing and we aged the whiskey on the boats and I know you came and you, you did our big auction last year. Uh, this year, instead of doing a bunch of little charities, uh, we're going to take everything that we make with the auction with the whiskey. We're going to donate it to American uh, Parkinson's Association, Northwest Chapter, in honor of you because of the way you've, you've helped everybody. So the whole fishing community is coming together and then we're going to raise money for Parkinson's because we just don't know what else we can do for a guy that's done so much for us. September 14th, you gonna be there? I met Chuck when I was about, well, probably four or five years old, maybe. He's always been a big part of my family. And, uh, you know, he's not blood, but he is family. And he's, you know, my dad was working for him for many, many, many years. And I was working for him many, many years. I always say that, uh, you know, tried and fired me five times, but Chuck hired me six. So it all worked out okay. He's always had my back. First time I ever met him, we were uh, up north in Kenai, Alaska. And this guy comes up to me and he says like, hey, you know, tell your dad that you just quit working for him and I'm gonna pay you double the work for me. I was like, really? I go up to my dad and I'm like, dad, some big tall guy over there named Chuck or something said that uh, I just quit working for you and I started working for him. He's paying me double what you pay me. My dad turned around and flipped him off. That was my first introduction to Chuck. I started driving a boat and uh, there was a moment where Chuck told me that he was proud of me. And that was, that means the world. I've had lessons to learn the hard way. And no matter what, Chuck always backed me up. And he always stood behind me, even if I screwed up. He'd tell me I screwed up and he'd give me that Chuck look where he kind of gets you out of the corner of his eye. And it's just a, a look of, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. You know, like we all know it hurts so much worse. No, me and Chuck are always on good terms. We're always doing something to help people. So I've never gotten the look, but uh, Casey McManus has probably got the look quite a few times because it's just Casey. But you know, I, I, I bring out the best in people. I came up, started going to Alaska in 1980. I was with a different fish company and everyone heard a lot about Chuck, you know, very innovative man and generous man. And I remember in the early 90s, I had my own boat and I was involved in herring fishing. And we were at that time going clear up to Norton Sound. And every spring there'd be ice conditions. And I remember Chuck for several years, he, on his time and his dime, he would fly out and lead all the boats through the ice so we could get safely through the fishing grounds. And that was pretty amazing because it's competitive fishery, you know? But he just wanted everyone to have an equal chance. One of the things that Parkinson's can do is it can uh, slow your ability to, to use your diaphragm. And if you can't use your diaphragm, it's hard to make words. So Chuck's uh, speech, he, he just can't speak as loud as he used to. And uh, unless you get him real pissed off. I've, I have heard him yell since he's had it. He doesn't even have to use his words anymore to tell me I made the wrong choice. He just gives me that look, you know, and it's his eyes can speak 10,000 words in two seconds. <laughs> that would be it. That would be the chuck like this. <laughs> you feel like he's looking right through you. <laughs> but he'd always just give you a hug or shake your hand and let you know that's life and that's okay and you just keep moving forward. I just love the guy and I appreciate him so much and everything that he's done for me. He's probably gonna watch this video and use that look. <laughs> but... When Josh and I first bought the Cornelia Marie, we were struggling. I went and I told them, I quit, you know, I gotta leave, try to go out and do my own thing. And I thought he'd be mad at me, you know, and I was actually tearing up because I felt like I was letting him down. Uh, but he was very supportive. And he, he said, I'm, I'm bummed that you're leaving. Do you need a partner? 
you know, and right then when he said that, I knew that he was still going to be on my team no matter what. When we got this boat rolling, I I spent every penny I had in my bank account. Josh spent every penny he had. And we're on the verge of losing the girl Cornelia Marie. We were flat broke by the time we got to start our first king crab season. Well, we didn't have a lot of money for fuel. We didn't have a lot of crab to catch. We didn't have, well, we didn't really have anything. And uh, I called Chuck and I said, hey, I'm going to need fuel and bait. I'm plum out of money. Can you help me out? It's like, hey, you know what? As long as you and your brother keep the stuff straight, because I'll make sure that you guys have enough crab quarter to fish, you know, and uh, we'll help you with getting your boat off the ground. And he did. He said, go to Accutan, get what you need, go fishing. We're going on 10 years later, Cornelia Maria is rocking and rolling, all due to a man that stepped out of his normal box. And uh, this is a good hearted soul. I'll tell you what, I owe a lot to that man. And that's why I want to honor him. And I want to support a cause that will directly affect him and, and hopefully people suffer from Parkinson's. I want to see something in Chuck's name go to help those people. Chuck and Diane both were really, really great to my parents when my dad was diagnosed with ALS. And my dad was actually working for Trident at the time. Pat and I officially met Chuck and Diane when uh, Pat went to work for Trident Seafoods. He got boats ready to go crabbing and all the shipyard work that is involved with that, managing their crab fleet. During that time, he was diagnosed with his ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Pat worked as long as he could for Trident, but eventually, um, you know, he wasn't able to get on and off the boats anymore. Eventually, he was in a wheelchair. We had a discussion um, one afternoon in our kitchen and decided he needed to quit. Word got up to Chuck and Diane, and they were very, very kind to us. They continued to pay Pat a salary for a little bit after he retired. And then the rest of the salary for that year, they donated to our ALS group. And through Chuck and Diane's kindness, as we were living with our disease, they called, they checked in on us. If you need anything, let us know what you need. How can we help? And. Um, we are just forever grateful for their support. We knew they had our backs, and that's something I can never forget. Chuck and Diane always kept following up and making sure that he was all right, helping out with all the fundraisers. There was never a doubt in our mind that the Trident family with Chuck and Diane had our, our backs moving through the disease that is ALS and moving forward. And it was really impressive to see. Chuck kind of set the set the tone for my life and watching the way he carried himself and what he did, and I try to emulate that. I want to be like Chuck. Chuck, you're a badass. Chuck's touched so many people in his life to watch Mischief Whiskey come together and Mike and Patty and bring this whole thing together in honor of Chuck. And we take the barrels out and we do our thing. We always did charity, but specifically to do this for Chuck. It's it's not just because he touched my life or Sean's or Sig's or Josh's. It's all because he touched everybody's life within this industry. Some way, somehow, Chuck's helped darn near everybody to the level that nobody will ever forget it. Chuck, thanks for all the help over the years. Um, you've been an inspiration. Chuck and Diane, I would like to say thank you very much for all the kindness that you showed Pat and I and my family as we were living with ALS. It, it seems impossible to be able to pay you back in any way, but we are grateful for this opportunity to do this event and, and raise as much money as we can for you. Thank you, Chuck and Diane, for always having our families back and supporting us in our journey against ALS. And we continue to support you in your journey against Parkinson's. It's impressive that one man was able to do so much for so many people. Not just keep them employed, but, you know, touch their lives in a way where they'll never forget them. Here's to you, Chuck. Cheers, Chuck. Cheers to you, Chuck. Hey, here's to you, Chuck, AKA the badass. Here's to Chuck. Thank you for everything you ever done for me. To Cheers. Chuck. Cheers. 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 Cheers.
Ich bin ein Schwierig. 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 Ich bin ein Sch